Um, you know, I'll move over. I'll move over here. Melanie, according to its website, Soul Cycle is indoor cycling reinvented. 45 minutes is all it takes to transform the way you look and feel. Soul Cycle is not only hugely successful and beloved by those who attend classes, but it also has a cult following. Melanie has served as CEO of Soul Cycle since 2015. Okay. I've read 2012. Um, during this time, she has led the explosive growth of the company from seven operating locations to 70 jam-packed studios across the nation, serving over 4 million people a year. Melanie has been honored by earning a spot on Fortune's 40 Under 40 list. Welcome, Melanie. Thank you for having me. Are these, open? Are these on? But yes, amazing. Cool. I think mine. So, if you could just tell us a little bit more about your background, because I love your nonlinear path. I know you grew up in Baltimore, but I thought it was so interesting that at Brown, and we have some Brown alumni in the audience. Yes. Yeah, they've been great. Um, our alma mater. But at Brown, what did you major in? Sure. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's been such an honor to be here with you guys as well. Um, Sophia and I have two young daughters who have become fast and furious best friends, so it's fun to be doing this together because usually we see each other at a tea party or a play date. Um, so I grew up in Baltimore. I had a father uh, who was an entrepreneur, which back in the late 70s and 80s was not de rigueur. Um, everybody's dads were doctors and lawyers, and my dad was the guy that ran messenger businesses and transportation businesses in D.C., um, so I've sort of taken a nonlinear path because I think my father took a nonlinear path. And I went to Brown. I studied engineering. My goal was to be an architect. I thought if I could know what was going on behind the walls and in the structure, I could design these great buildings. And I realized two years in that I was actually terrible, um, not creative, and not passionate about it. Um, and I had this very pivotal moment in college where I was sitting in my dorm and I had a, um, a very complex turbine to design that was due the next day, and we'd had 30 days to do it, and I obviously was way behind, and it is a recurring nightmare that I have about this turbine when I know that I haven't prepared for something in business. And I called my mother, because that's what you do when you're 21, and said, I, I can't do engineering anymore. I don't like this. And we had this conversation about what I loved about engineering was problem solving and teamwork and collaboration, but what I didn't love was the output. I just wasn't passionate about it. Um, and the wonderful thing about Brown is you can do anything. So I went to my advisor and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I think I want to get into business like my father. And we sort of architected a major and I ended up with a degree in engineering and economics. And um, I've had a really fun time in business. I worked at Starwood Hotels on uh, different hotel projects. I worked on a team that launched Virgin America, the domestic air carrier. And what did she do there? With Virgin America? Yeah. Oh, that was fascinating. Um, so I worked at Starwood first. I was there for three years. It was a highly structured, very corporate, big company. I learned a ton about corporate finance and real estate and portfolio acquisitions and dispositions. Nothing as distressed as what you did. Um, and I was commuting out to White Plains, and I was working 80 hours a week and not sleeping very much. And I was introduced to this woman who was being sent over to the U.S. by Sir Richard to start a domestic air carrier. And she was looking for a corporate development manager to come and build models and figure it out. And I thought, this is amazing. I can work in Soho instead of White Plains. That was really like the, the genesis of why I was so passionate about it. And when we started, it was me and Francis, and it was well, now we're going to start an airline. And I thought, oh my god, what have I done? My whole career is like off the rails. And four and a half years later, um, the whole team of 26 people at the time relocated to Burlingame, California, where they're headquartered out of. And I was part of this incredible team that started with a financial model, and then we bought aircraft and engines and seats, and I designed uniforms and customer experience, which in the airline industry, when so much of it is controlled by the airport and the gates and the slots and all that kind of stuff, is not that creative. Um, but it was an, an unbelievable experience to be a part of a team like that. Aren't you buying aircraft engines and de Learns designing uniforms? But you don't realize, anyone, he, the, since we're all wellness professionals, in the airline industry, you have to buy the shell and then the engines and then the seats. So it's like a kit of parts you have to put together. You got to get the whole thing financed. So it's, it was, uh, I got to learn a lot about a lot of different things. And I met my husband there. So that ah. all worked out for many reasons. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I... I saw you talking online about your customer 
which I thought was great because you describe a mindset. But before I even ask you about that, I'd love to hear how you define soul. So can I just ask in the room who's been to Soul Cycle? OK, great. Oh, amazing. OK. So um, I first experienced Soul Cycle in 2008 when there was one studio on the Upper West Side. And what I realized really quickly by the time I found it and got down the long hallway and I met the founders at the front desk, but this was so much more than a fitness experience. I had uh, worked out my entire life. Fitness was a huge part of my routine. And what Soul Cycle was was social and joyful and community. And the workout was really just the underpinnings of what it was being created in that lobby. And so today, with now we have 74 locations. We're about to open number 75 this weekend. We're in 14 markets. Um, what we're really creating are these communities and an experience on the bike, which we say enables personal breakthrough. And for you, it could be clarity. Um, for others, it could be viewing yourself in a different way. For some, it's just healthy habits and recognizing that fitness can be fun. You know, it's 60 people moving to the rhythm of the music, to candlelight with an inspirational instructor telling you you can be stronger tomorrow than you were yesterday. You start eating healthier, you start sleeping more. It really becomes, we joke, it's like a gateway drug. You start with SoulCycle and you start to live this really healthy lifestyle. Um, but what people come for in the beginning, we say, is the fitness. But what they stay for is that breakthrough and that connection and that community that's created in the studio. I, uh, I think the idea of personal transformation is fascinating and that SoulCycle aims to create that or be a real catalyst for it in 45 minutes and it really can transform your day. Um, I, uh, being a fan of Tony Robbins, and I know you were just on a panel or podcast with him, he talks about, I've heard him talk about like, you need to physically get out of your comfort zone, and, and then there are like other things that just help create transformation. So it was just interesting, the parallels between what you're able to create at SoulCycle in 45 minutes and messages that and maybe experiences that he tries to create over days. But I, um, I have so many friends who, they get addicted to a soul cycle instructor, and everything has to pause when the reservations open, because <laughs> they need to make the class, otherwise it ruins their whole day. My friend Christine wrote, soul cycle elevates me in every way. The workouts are intensely invigorating, but really are secondary to the mental clarity and connection to myself that I experience. Our strength from within is very powerful, and Soul Cycle brings that out for me. That's nice to hear. I love Soul Cycle's new Find It campaign, and I would love for you to talk more about what it is. Yeah. So we launched the campaign a month ago or so now with the idea that what you do find in the room and on the bike is very individual. For some people, like I said, it's clarity and disconnection because we are so tethered to technology. We say it's 45 minutes disconnected from technology where you can experience almost a moving meditation in the room. For others, it's joy. For some, it's friendships. Our, our senior director of uh, legal affairs met her husband in the lobby. Um, so. All of our riders find something different in the room and what we wanted to create and really celebrate are the instructors and their stories of what they're trying to bring to the podium to enable in the room and next week we're launching our rider stories which will give our riders a platform to share uh, what they found in the room but it's really about an individual journey because for each of us a personal transformation can be unique and frankly can be different over the time um, that you spend with us because many of our riders have been riding with us for 11 years and we've gotten them through illnesses, through divorces, through challenges in their lives. And it really, it can vary, again, with each individual and within the community as well. My friend Jen uh, recently told me something I needed her to share with you. Oh, great. So I am getting married next Saturday. Um, <laughs> Yay! So excited. It hasn't really hit me yet. But the one part of my day that I made it like mandatory for like myself and for like all my friends, my brother and family is we were going to Soul Cycle in the morning, 8.30 a.m. to like detox, zen out, cry it out if you need to because I've been like an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> um, and just really like that whole camaraderie part of before jumping into like such an incredible day. But just that that feeling you get when you're there is like unlike 
anything. So anyone who hasn't like raised their hand before, like <laughs> you must go. And if you want to come, we're going to the Nomad location <laughs> next Saturday at 8.30 a.m. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. So just a couple things. What has pleasantly surprised you about three things? One, being CEO of SoulCycle. What has pleasantly, pleasantly surprised, surprised me? Um, I think you know, we've had so many incredible moments as a business and as a brand and as a community. Um, I think one of the greatest surprises was when we got the call from former Lady Michelle Obama's office that she wanted to come in when we first opened in DC. And um, that experience of knowing that A, she'd heard of us, because sometimes we still view ourselves as the five studio brand in, in New York around the corner, um, but B, that she was also looking for transformation and connection and fun in a way to step away from her, her crazy life. So I think that was possibly, certainly one of the greatest surprises and definitely one of the most rewarding experiences to see her become part of the community while she was in office. I can understand why. <laughs> what has pleasantly surprised you about the opportunity for personal transformation? You know, I think for, um, you know, I have two kids. Um, this job is 24 seven. I do look at my phone first thing in the morning, but I'm now gonna try not to do that anymore. Okay. I know, I feel like I'm in a, in a confession booth. Um, when you're operating a business that's operating 16 hours a day in 14 different markets, you know, making sure that if, when something happens, um, I was COO for three years, I don't think I'll ever be able to take that out of my body that I'm the call when something um, goes wrong, which does more often than not. Um, but uh, a lot of things go right too. But I think the ability for me to be able to step into a room and have 45 minutes and have my own transformation and to still be able to do that after eight years as someone who feels like I'm pulled in a thousand different directions every single day, um, it's just really inspiring that I still love it. And I find answers in that room and I cry in that room and I laugh and I have a good time. And people always ask me, are you looking, are you judging, are you watching? And I'm totally not. I'm completely disconnected in there because it's my special place too. Uh, last, what has pleasantly surprised you about being a full-time working mother? Hmm. <laughs> I think that, um, that you can make the space for everything. Um, I believe very firmly in work-life integration. I think this concept of work-life balance is something that we shouldn't even really try to talk about anymore because it, it truly isn't possible. You know, I believe that your life is a pie. You don't go to work and then go to life. You have one life. And work and kids and being a wife and being a human being who has my own ambitions personally and my own development work that I'm focused on and having a social life and all that, it's one big pie. The different pieces shift as they need to, and your responsibility is to shift your pie and be present to what you need to be present to. Um, but I, there are so many um, women and so many wonderful mentors that I've had that were like, you just, don't, just set your expectations. You can't have it all. And I think you can. I just think you have to evolve how you think about it all. And I think it changes over time. But I can be very present with my children and have great quality time with them. And I can be very present to my job and present with David. And, you can make it all work. It just takes discipline, prioritization, and I think it's just a lot of energy. I'm more focused on being a role model for my son even than for my daughter. I know my daughter is being raised to her own limitless potential and she's also incredibly sassy and will figure out what she's doing. <laughs> but having a son who's being raised with a mother who's a CEO of a company, a company that he can interact with every day, that he understands what it is that we do, and I put him behind the front desk more often than not, to detab waters and hand out shoes. And it's great for him to understand truly what, what I do, but I am raising him to be completely free of gender bias. And so that to watch that generation coming up behind us, I think is incredibly inspiring and motivating. Thank you for doing that. Thank you both.